Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Chat Show. This 30-minute webinar is live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And your comments and questions via these platforms are most welcome. Please keep them kind and respectful. Following this event, you are welcome to join us via the Blue Jeans online conferencing app for a one-hour NASA-accredited workshop with our guest presenter. Now, here's your host, Dr. Tim Kitchen. Well, thank you very much, Rob, and welcome to this Inject Creativity live chat show being recorded for the first time live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. That deserves a big round of applause or maybe a little round of applause. It's also live on Twitter, LinkedIn, and the Australasian Adobe in Education Facebook group. We're recording this on Wednesday, the 18th of November, and I'm going to bring the banner up myself because I'm having to do a lot of the techie things myself. We'll explain why in just a minute. And I'm your host, Dr. Tim Kitchen, and I am the Senior Education Specialist for the Asia-Pacific region for Adobe. Before I introduce our co-host, Erin, I would like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. Please welcome my amazing co-host, Erin Raithke. How are you, Erin? Hi, Tim. I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm very well. I bet you're pretty excited about tonight. Yes, State of Origin Decider. It's amazing. I love no, a talking, decider. Talking about the show, Inject Creativity Live. That's Absolutely. The show and then Origin. You're trying to tell me we need to finish on time tonight. <laughs> State well, of origin. It's actually not so bad tonight because it's um 7 p.m. local Queensland time. So I actually have a little bit of a breathing room. I'm not gonna have to run away from our deeper dive over at Blue Jeans. So quickly. <laughs> well, those of us who are from Victoria and South Australia and Western Australia and Northern Territory and just about every other part of the country, for those of us in those regions, state of origin is a unique thing that's uh, that's for New South Wales and Queensland. And that's why I was a bit excited because Queensland won the first game, New South Wales won the second game, and tonight is the decider but it is at Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane. Does that give them a huge advantage, Erin? I don't know. It worked well for Game 2 for New South Wales, so we'll just have to see, won't we? There you go. Oh, well, I'll make sure I'm tuning in tonight to enjoy it as well. Hey, other exciting news, Erin. 5,000 Level 1 members of the Adobe Creative Educators Program have officially graduated as of last week. That announcement was made. That deserves another round of cheering, I think. Congratulations. That is Ooh. a big number. That's amazing. It is good. That's an international number, of course. And in Australia, I think we're getting close to about 200 uh, who have finished Level 1, which is outstanding in itself. And we're um, looking forward to a lot more because there's a lot who have uh, enrolled. In fact, there are over 10,000 who've enrolled in the Adobe Creative Educators Program. So it's mm -hmm. about a 50% pass rate. Uh, and that's pretty good with these sorts of programs to get 50% people. So the message out there, if you are watching this and you've started the Adobe Creative Educators Program, you haven't quite finished it yet, yep. go for it. It's not that hard, is it, Erin? You've done it. I have, I have completed it myself and yeah, it was fun putting together my my little Spark post um, for the, the final project to submit and I got some really fantastic feedback from the community of participants in the creativity, I'm sorry, creativity for all level one course, got that one out. Um, so yeah, if you haven't already self-enrolled or you're, you know, partway through, it really didn't take that long to complete and I found a lot of the resources really helpful. Um, we've got quite a few people jumping into the chat over on the Adobe for Education channel too. Tim, lots of hellos. Timothy Cosgrove is supporting Queensland all the way from snowy Toronto. Thanks, Tim. 
Let's bring his comment up. He says, good morning, everyone from snowy Toronto. Go Queensland. Of course, he's an ex-Queenslander. That's why he's saying that. Any yeah, other comments you. there okay. that took your attention there, Erin? Uh, we do have a comment from Christine over in LinkedIn that I think she would have posted when you were doing your welcome to country, which uh, acknowledgement of country, I should say, um, which was lovely. And oh, and we've got an anonymous Facebook user saying go the blues. So it's we've got a very balanced show tonight, Tim, for everyone. Oh, there you go. I do like this comment by Christine. It's something we need to acknowledge. We had NADOC week last week around mm -hmm. Australia, and uh, it's so important to realise that our Indigenous people were the first farmers, the first firefighters, the first astrologists, and the first Australians. So I'm I'm really pleased that we can actually do an acknowledgement of country at the beginning of all of these shows like we should do. All right, Erin, what can we look forward to during this episode? Well, I'm looking forward to introducing everyone to our special guests for this episode. We've got Adobe Education Leaders, Juliet Bentley from Brisbane, Queensland, who'll be focusing on her students' use of Adobe Spark and Adobe Education Leader, Lauren Sayer from Melbourne in Victoria, who'll be sharing how Adobe XD is creatively being used at her school, Halery College. We'll be hearing from Juliet and Lauren very soon. Helping us moderate and doing some of the techie things behind the scenes is not Jerry Wong this time, but it's Adobe Customer Success Manager, Luke Cathcart. Luke, how are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'll be moderating the chat, so please ask questions, make comments, and help make this chat show really interactive. I have an Adobe quiz question to help get the chat happening. Well, now that's something what that is... Jerry doesn't often do, Luke. So this is this is oh. a, a change to the script. Our very first <laughs> question from the moderator. Now, folks, get ready for this, and we're looking forward to see if you can answer this question in the uh, chat section. What's the question, Luke? Lucky me. What is the name of the brand new Adobe app that was launched at the recent Adobe Max event? Oh, good question. Uh, let's see. Yeah, people go. Uh, so it's a great question, Luke. Uh, we are getting the chat feed from those of you on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, um, but I'm not seeing any Twitter posts filter in as yet. So if you would like to post and you're on Twitter, we do recommend that you jump across onto the Adobe for Education YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Adobe for Education. And we've got a response already, Luke. Let's just see how we go. Uh, we've got uh, Louise, who's an Adobe Education Leader in New South Wales. She's saying Aurora. Now, that's not the app that I was thinking of, so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to accept that answer just because I am the judge, I am the jury, I am yeah. the executioner of this. Oh. So that's not the answer I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, another app that was launched during max 2020 that uh, will give you a clue it's mm, it's it's related to an app that already currently exists is it, is it a, tr a little bit of a tricky question tim because i think i might know which one you're talking well, about you just, just hold your horses there and i'm sure someone else will come up with an answer in a minute so That's louise cool. I'll be mysterious and then if I'm wrong, no one will know. <laughs> exactly right. Luke, thank you very much for joining us and uh, thank you again for all your help with the screen sharing as we go through this particular program. Uh, we'll be continuing a more relaxed version of the chat during the Deeper Dive event at the top of the hour or close enough to that where we'll be crossing to Blue Jeans. Now, if you haven't been to Blue Jeans before, let me bring up the link there, bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe. And that's a much more relaxed version of the show, but also a deeper dive where we find out a bit more about what our presenters will be presenting. And as always, remember that the more you contribute, the more interactive these sessions become. And we really do value your comments and your thoughts. So please get involved. So have a look at some of the answers. Uh, Louise has got a confession to make. Well, you know, like if you watched it, if you were at Max, you'd know, the, well, I hope you'd know the answer. Maybe I would need to give a clue. Uh, Christine's saying, is it Dropbox? Now, that's not an Adobe application. My goodness. Although we do partner yeah, yeah. with. The with partnership with, with 
with office and teams and yeah that was announced too, but it's not quite what you're looking for i don't think tim no it sounds like i need to give another clue all right it's directly related to a very well established creative cloud application it's kind of like a new version of it and it is for ios and that's as much as i'm going to give away because i'm sure we'll get an answer I was, I was kind of hoping we'd get an answer well by now, but obviously not. So Can I make a, make a like a little gesture to see if I, I'm right and see if you could code it, Tim? Oh, I don't know. Are you going to give it away? Yeah, I think you're giving it away. Just put your hand down for the moment, giving it away. All right. So the more you contribute with the chat, what, what happens there, Erin, the more you contribute? The more we value your comments and thoughts and the more interactive the sessions become. I'm glad we patted it out a little bit longer because Stell from YouTube, she's a YouTube, she says, well, Stell, he says, Illustrator for mobile. Well, that's close enough, I think. It's not exactly the answer I was looking for. I was looking for Illustrator on the iPad, but, you know, that's close enough. So I think a round of applause goes to Stell. Well done, Stell. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, I'm glad we got that sorted. But we got there in the end. <laughs> uh, well done. So, Spark Challenge for this evening, Tim. I think so. Let's just bring up our Spark Challenge intro. Well, folks, I hope you're ready for this week's Spark Challenge. Uh, I was kind of hoping that um, Stell's banner would disappear automatically, but it didn't, but there you go. And we can probably get rid of the other banner now. You can see why I'm having to work extra hard today. Here we go. We're in business now. So, so Aaron, what is the Spark Challenge for tonight? Well, your Spark Challenge for this episode is to create a Spark post based on something that you've enjoyed during this event. That's a very large brief, but, you know, if you want to challenge yourself, we do ask that you try to pop in some different effects or elements to experiment in Spark Post, and you can do it on desktop or on a mobile device if you've installed the app. And it's just interesting, Roland from the Philippines has thrown in a comment that he was saying, Fresco for the iPhone. It's true. It was. Yeah. It was announced. Yeah, that could have been an answer, but sorry, it's not the one that I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember, I'm the judge here, so yeah, you might have got you might have got something, but I'll give you a round of applause anyway. Uh, there we go. Round of applause. So we go. Yeah, we've got a round of applause for Roland, all the way from Manila in the Philippines, and hopefully. Mm -hmm. They've had a lot of flooding in that part of the world. Hopefully, Roland, you are okay. We'll connect at the Deeper Dive event. Maybe you can give us an update, which would be lovely. Mm -hmm. All right, Spark Challenge. Erin, yes. are you able to share your phone? Because it, it should be already up there for you to pop uh, up on the screen, Tim. I'm just going to get rid of so get rid of Roland's comment here. He's had his moment in the sun. Let's so, bring up your phone. There we go. So we're looking at indeed. Aaron's phone. Yeah, Aaron, so Spark post. Ab oh, not that one. Yeah, Let's try that again. <laughs> Spark post. There we go. It's there we go. Beautiful. Isn't live wonderful, everyone? <laughs> oh yeah, we love live. Now, Erin, just to remind people, if you're not that familiar with Spark, uh, the most common way of accessing Spark is through the browser at spark.adobe.com, mm -hmm. and I will bring up that banner because i know it's hit hiding there somewhere but to do it through your ios device or your android device you can access spark post through ios on android we're using an iphone mm -hmm. here it actually has a has a few extra features which are quite creative erin can you amazing. talk us through the process of creating a spark post with your phone well, I usually like to create them without using one of the many, many, many templates you can see that are provided here. So to do that, I simply select the green plus button that's at the center bottom of my screen. And then it asks me what I want to create. And hey, go, I'm go camera, Erin, go camera. Camera, camera, camera. Because you can't do that in go. the browser. Go camera. Always. So Spark Post would like to access the camera. Let's say, okay. Take a selfie. Oh, we'll flip the screen and we'll go. Big selfie. Nice. So use and we'll that. use that one by tapping use photo. And I will go and make a square Instagram post. So I'll go done. Cool. 
And as you can see there, it's preloaded some stuff from my account, like the TAFE Queensland logo. So what I will just probably do is I will take that out. And it's also auto added some text for me there, which is really super handy. Um, so if I like that, then I can double tap it, just like it says in the instructions. And um, I will just say, hello world, little coaching, pop that in there. And then if I want to make changes because I'm not a huge fan of that text, I can have the options to change the font. I have options to change the color spectrum. And it even supplies me with a series of different color swatches that I can use until I find something that works for me. So let's go something nice and mighty and maroon. And I can even change the shape of the text that's in here. So let's change that to a nice long banner and I'll just tap done. And that is as easy as it is to um, insert content. The other nifty thing that's only just been recently introduced into the web version of this at Spark, um, dot yeah adobe.spark.com spark.adobe.com i'm having a, a little moment is um the animation button so you see that's on the top right hand side of the row so i can go through these options and animate not only the text but if i select photo or scroll all the way across to photo i can change the behavior of the photo itself even changing the way it fades in and behaves. So um, for those of you who follow me on social media, you will probably notice that I do this um, using different techniques for my little reminders that I pop up before our show each week. And um, yeah, I find that they can be pretty impactful to catch the eye as you're scrolling through a feed. And to get those ready for publishing, you'll see at the top right hand corner of the screen is the little share button. And I can share it either as a video animation if I want to retain those um, animations I popped onto the text, or I can pop it up as a still image. So I'm going to go video animation. And as you can see, it's just creating that for me. And um, if you're on a PC, it would probably actually download this to your downloads folder. But as I am on a phone, it's going to ask me where I want to put it so I can either pop it straight up onto social media, or Karen, I can, can you, save the video on the phone. Karen, can you copy the link? Because once the link is copied, you can then theoretically mm -hmm. put it into the chat, assuming you're on a on a. I um, sure uh, can. Laptop. So let's try that again. So we'll share and we'll go animation. And will it let me create a link with the video? I'm not sure if Spark Post will. Let's have a play. It's done that already. So it's in the background, and what you'd need to do now is, there it is. Probably paste it into a, like a, a, an email or a notes. If you yep. email that link to yourself, and then you could open it up in your laptop and add it to the chat. That's just a way of getting around the fact that you're using a different device. Mm -hmm. So Erin, um, we're going to have to keep moving there, but thank you very absolutely. much for sharing that. And uh, the challenge, just to remind you, is to create a Spark post about something that was cool about the show and then be prepared to share that at the Deeper Dive event a little bit later. Erin, can you introduce our special guests, please? No worries, Tim. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Adobe Education Leaders, Juliet Bentley and Lauren Sayer. Let's bring them both up to the screen and let's give them a round of applause and a big welcome. Welcome, Lauren, welcome, Juliet. Thank you for joining us today. Are you both well? Very well, thank you. Good. Wonderfully Good. well, thanks, Tim. Julia, for those who haven't met you before, which would be surprise me somewhat because <laughs> everyone's met Juliet. Tell us about what you do and what you do at your school and what you teach. Um, I'm a religion and English teacher. I also teach positive education. And I have a writer's club that has been running for 10 years. And I have these students coming 50 odd um, every Friday and they write for an hour and share their writing. And that's actually where I began using the Adobe, actually it was Adobe Slate at the time. But um, it's fantastic. I'm not, an, I'm not an IT teacher. I'm not a digital technologies teacher, which is probably why I can share what I'm doing and hopefully inspire people who aren't necessarily techno savvy to use tools in this way. 
and I, we'll probably talk a bit about this in the deeper dive event, uh, Julia, but I still remember the day that I met you for the first time. And I'm pretty sure that was also the day you were introduced to Slate at the time. And well, it's just, it's been incredible what you've created since then and what you've developed as an English teacher, as a religious studies teacher. And now you are Ad the Asia Pacific Adobe master teacher for this whole region of the world which is just an awesome achievement. So congratulations, and we really look forward to hearing more from you later. Erin. Yes, Lauren, welcome to the Inject Creativity Live, or welcome back, I should say, to the Inject <laughs> Creativity Live chat show. Um, so I believe you're about to change your school and job. What can you tell us about this change? No problems. Well, it's it's bittersweet. I'm incredibly excited. Um, but I'm very sad to leave Halebury and I'll talk a little bit about that it's in very good hands with another Adobe alumni. So I'm moving to an executive role in, um, so I will be the executive director of digital learning research and innovation at Melbourne Girls Grammar, which is an incredibly lucky position. And I'm very privileged to be able to join Dr. Tony Meath and the executive team. They're really working with the girls on all aspects of creativity as one of the main parts of the of the strategic plan and how we're working. And whilst I'm incredibly sad to be leaving Halebury, I will say that it is in very good hands because one of one of the Adobe education leaders that I admire greatly at a school that I know is close to Tim's heart is um, Michelle Dennis from Strathcona is moving to my role at Halebury. And I'm so excited and even more excited that our last two weeks, we will be working together at Halebury, which is a really lucky thing for oh. us to be able to work together for the last two weeks, but oh, um, an incredible opportunity. And I'm very excited and it's always wonderful to have where you're, when you're leaving to be left in amazing hands that I'm incredibly confident will take everyone through to the next chapter. Yeah, it's, it's very, always so good when you have the end of an era and you actually have that opportunity to do a proper handover. Yeah. That's so wonderful. And sorry, Tim, you were about to say? Yeah, I was just say how excited I am about the, the sort of the repositioning of these positions at these particular schools. And I, I just reflect back to when I was... Um, I was a classroom IT teacher and thinking about aspirationally, thinking about where do I head in my career. And uh, I met a teacher in, in Western Australia at a, at a conference who was an IT teacher and, and he was the director of learning technologies at the school, but he was also the deputy principal of the school. Yeah. And that really inspired me to think, well, that shows a lot of initiative at that particular school, that someone who's coming in from an IT media type background could then become a deputy principal. And that really led me on to think about where I'd be heading. And I eventually became the director of learning technologies at that school and joined the executive of, of that school, which was wonderful to be having that experience and in the process of hiring other teachers and all those sorts of experiences that most teachers don't really get that opportunity to do, but it was wonderful for my career. And uh, and then, of course, Adobe came along, and so I kind of went on the slight side. But I'm really, really pleased for you, Lo, and I'm looking forward mm. to hel helping you along and, and sharing your journey with you as, uh, you know, in what, what capacity that I can to help you, which is terrific. It's been it's been one of my first jobs, even though I haven't started yet, to ensure that all our students have the new creative cloud um, package um, through independent schools. So that's already been organised. So I'm ready to go. Wonderful. And you're getting quite a few congratulations here from various people from ah. around the world who are watching this live. Thank you very much. Timothy Cosgrove from Canada and Sarita. It looks like possibly from India there. I haven't met Sarita yet, but... Um, Thank you very much for your comments and keep throwing them in. Juliet, tell us about what you will be presenting at the Deeper Dive event later on. So I'm going to be talking about the different ways that um, I started off using the Spark um, apps as a means of teaching and the leverage of handing that control and that creativity and curation over to my students but also how I'm also encouraging other people to use it in ways that they hadn't before. So it'll be an interesting way to look at Spark being used for advocacy. Excellent. Looking forward to it. 
And um, Lauren, what will you be sharing with us at the Deeper Dive this evening? Well, last time I spoke about Adobe Spark, so I'm looking forward to Juliet's. And tonight I'm going to talk about Adobe XD, and it's actually a program that's currently running right now at Halebury. And like a lot of schools that have been in remote learning and are coming back, those city options and year nine programs of going and traveling are not currently able to be run. And we've run an amazing program called the Halebury Incubator Project. And I'm going to talk a bit about how students are creating mock-up apps as part of a innovation program and partnering with industry to really launch their own startups for good across Halebury. That's great. Looking forward to it. Well, thank you, Lauren and Juliet. We'll catch up with you very soon. We'll just say goodbye now. We've got a few little things to mention before we jump, jump into the Deeper Dive event. We'll see you very soon. In between Juliet and Lauren's sessions at the Deeper Dive event, we will be doing an Adobe Max recap chapter and sharing a special Spark page that has been created to highlight the announcements that came out of Max 2020. I'm looking forward to that, Tim, because there were so many great update announcements that were up at Max. We just got a confirmation that Sarita is from India. Thank you, Sarita. It's lovely to have people from India and from Canada and from all over the world, the Philippines. It's terrific. It's great. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, Juliet and I are hosting the 200-word Writing for Change Challenge. I'll just bring Juliet up on the screen. Sorry, Juliet. I'll just let's make sure you're aware of that. And uh, Julia is going to uh, give us some comments about that a little bit. In fact, tell us now about yeah. this particular challenge and the live streams that we've been doing. Well, the idea, idea is that basically the students get the opportunity. I mean, in my writers group, they get the chance to write every week, but many students don't. So as an opportunity to build that muscle, we're giving them the opportunity to, using opportunity too often, um, write 200 words on major issues and the idea of tying them into the sustainable development goals. So we're going to be, uh, would I like to show you the actual page, Tim, at this point? Uh, no, we're running a bit late in time, Juliet. So, so um, basically the idea is that we're going to be working and we're talking to authors and influencers. We're getting them to write 200 words on a topic of their choice from the 10 um, opportunities. And we talk about the process of writing. And hopefully that will inspire our students to not only enjoy their writing process, but get on with their own and sub submit those pieces to the Wakelet um, page. Which we've is had some fantastic fantastic writers that we've interviewed in the last few Thursday evenings. And tomorrow we've got Shelley Lloyd, who's yeah. an ex ABC journalist and now a freelance journalist. And last week, tell us who we interviewed last week. Ah, oh, we interviewed one of my favorites, Jackie French. And it was fantastic. She was, she was fabulous. And she was in a remote environment, so coped incredibly well with um, all, of, all of that meant, frankly. Terrific. Thank you, Julia. And tomorrow, uh, join us if you can through the Adobe for Education YouTube channel as we interview Shelley Lloyd, the journalist, and find out what she has to contribute to the 200 word writing for change challenge thank you juliet we'll catch up with you soon one of the other initiatives we have at the moment on the adobe for education youtube channel is the tom videos so tom stands for teaching online masterclass this is a set of short clips from educators around the globe sharing advice on how to effectively teach online these clips were produced in collaboration with adobe makematic participate icivics and clickview these videos are also available to educators and school leaders as a free self-paced course on the Adobe Education Exchange with the option to complete an assignment and receive a badge and certificate for professional development hours. Now, I think we don't have time for the video, do we, Tim? I think we'll play, yeah. Play I'm, I'm happy to go over time a little bit because we have the audience here who will move in at the right time. So let's have a look at this clip. Welcome to Tom Teaching Online Masterclass a free video course designed to help educators adapt quickly to online teaching. There are a few practical strategies. Tom features over 50 bite-sized video modules designed to help you make the leap from face-to-face -face students take a greater care to online teaching and learning, to collaborate and to build ideas, focusing on pedagogy over technology, the wonderful learning environment with expert instruction from educators, practicing, 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 and academia. Keep them unitasking to keep them learning. 
Let Tom be your guide to online teaching. A lot yeah, of familiar faces there, Tom. There's a lot of familiar oh, faces yeah. in those videos, that promo. Um, so, yes, the Global Adobe in Education team recently launched Level 2 of the Adobe Creative Educators Program. This is a program for all educators in all curriculum areas. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be in this program, but you do have to complete Level 1 to get your Level 1 badge before you can start Level 2. And last week, we announced our 5,000th graduate of level one that deserves a cheer is that good? that's not a bad cheer that's a pretty boring cheer actually let's try a better cheer there we go that's a more enthusiastic cheer <laughs> Five thousand. now we've actually had ten thousand people um, over ten thousand educators join the adobe or start the process but not actually complete it so we've had a 50 percent over just under 50 percent actually complete which is really terrific and the rest of you well you know what are you doing <laughs> let's see if you can get going erin you've, you've done the course yourself haven't you I have, and I really enjoyed level one, and I am working my way through level two in between all of my other commitments and projects. And um, yeah, everything that I have um, watched, all of the little clips and everything, I have found them both thought provoking and immediately applicable to my job. So it's been really good. So hover your camera over this QR code or type the link to find out more about the program, especially if you haven't started yet. Indeed. That'd be terrific. We have some yeah. other exciting things to announce too, Erin. Yes, we do. They're in starting in February next year, the Adobe and Education team will be running a new series of webinars that will target specific education levels and Adobe applications. Now, this is brand new, folks. We've literally only just started this and we're launching it pretty much now. You're the first people to hear about it. It's called the Get to Know Your Adobe Apps set of webinars and we we have one set for upper primary and lower secondary sort of like middle school but we're catering for teachers of year four to year nine we have another set for senior secondary teachers and a set of sessions especially for those involved in post-secondary education like me so presenters will include dr tim kitchen as well as adobe's amazing solution consultants and some adobe education leaders the first of each of the sessions will be an overview of a number of Adobe applications, and then we'll survey the audience to see what they would prefer in terms of a more comprehensive look at particular apps during the following sessions. So each session will be for 90 minutes, starting at 4.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Time, and then repeated the next day or soon after at 6.30 p.m. to cater for the Western States, Southeast Asia, and anyone who couldn't make the 4.30 p.m. session. Note that registrations for these events will be open later this week to coincide with my November newsletter, which I'm planning to get out on Friday. One of the other many hidden gems within the Adobe for Education YouTube channel is the Adobe Acrobat for Teaching and Learning playlist. So this series of short tutorials provides educators, admin staff, and students with an intuitive and visual guide for using Adobe Acrobat to solve common use cases in classrooms, homework, or distance learning to enhance student reading and transform the classroom. Um, and we do have a video that explains more. As learning becomes more and more accessible beyond the physical classroom and students and teachers use digital platforms to share and exchange information, using the right tools and formats has never been more essential. In Adobe Acrobat for Teaching and Learning, you'll learn how to use Adobe Acrobat and its associated apps to easily enhance your use of PDFs and optimize the reading experience on all device types, which will save you time and ultimately support and deepen your students' learning in any subject area. Whether you're looking for ways to help students quickly capture and submit their learning from home, or convert your materials into text that look consistent on any device, or save time getting documents signed, you'll develop your own skill set along the way and learn essential digital literacy skills. The tutorials, projects and lesson ideas in this course are simple, flexible and adaptable, making them an ideal resource for your own learning and also making it easy to assign them directly to your students in any subject. You'll learn from Phil Badham, an expert educator and educational technologist from the UK, 
and see a wide range of instructional videos, teaching resources, ideas and activities spanning all ages and grade levels. Enroll for free and learn more at edX.adobe.com. Adobe is and we'll standard just standard tools like Photoshop. Started a different video then. There you go. Oh, boy, oh, boy. So make sure no you worries. Share resources with your colleagues and your wider education networks. Last announcement, Erin. Yes, so you should have received an email recently from Tim that featured a link to a survey to help us plan Inject Creativity Live for 2021. If you didn't get the survey, use your smartphone now or your camera and your smartphone to hover over this QR code or activate this particular link that we've got. We would really appreciate your input into making this event as valuable as possible for you and your colleagues. And finally... If you are on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join the group using the link at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash AUSAEL. It's a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education. And uh, Luke, are we able to get the Facebook uh, slide up there? No, we've lost Luke. Oh, there we go. Having some issues in Canberra. Oh, well, hopefully he'll come back soon. Mm. All right, folks, uh, that is it for the show. I know we've run over time, but I'm not so fast because you guys are our audience for our next show, which is the Deeper Dive event. So we're about to move to that Jump Deeper over. Dive event. Let me just bring up the banner just to remind you of where to go. It is bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe. That's bluejeans.com slash kitchen. At Adobe, and of course, we can't finish the chat show without Rob the Robot helping us finish off. Thank you for being part of this week's Inject Creativity Live chat show. We hope you enjoyed it and found it edutaining. It's now time to switch over to Blue Jeans via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for the Deeper Dive show, which is just about to start. See you there.